Hey everybody, welcome back to Row Country and welcome if you are new. Today I'm bringing you some DIYs to show you how I took this bare coffee bar and turned it into this for my Halloween decor. Stay tuned so you can see just how easy this is. Okay, everybody, so like I said, I'm bringing you this coffee bar. There are some free printables, so don't worry. Just stay tuned and see how we brought everything together. Today, we're starting with this sign. It is a Cricut design. I will let you know that. I did start with this adorable little sign from the Dollar Tree. I knew as soon as I saw it, I knew I had to buy two, and I did. I wanted one for this project, and I'm taking some scrap wood that I've had around the house, and I'm going to mix the chalk paint in elephant and ink together because I'm running low on chalk paint in that color ink and I wanted to really extend the amount that I had. So all I'm doing is taking some of this on my paintbrush, two or three dollops as I'll say, and a little bit of the black and I'm just gonna mix it together. And really for all of the projects that I do any painting on in this video, this is what I did so that I could extend my paint. So I just mixed it up until it was a very dark gray and almost a very light black, if that's at all possible. And I just gave this a coat on the top and then on the sides, and I'm going to put that aside to dry. Now, I could have left this guy alone completely, but I did take my Cricut and I did cut out the word boo in black. This is removable Cricut vinyl for those of you who are wondering, and I will try to have all of the script or the font in the description box below. But if not, just ask me a question down in the comments and I'll try to get back to you on that. Now, the majority of my lettering on this sign is white because I did paint my wood black, but I wanted the boo in black to put on top of this adorable little ghost. Guys, he's got just a teeny tiny bit of glitter on him, but that is perfect for me. I absolutely love that about it. And I just did my best to center this. The thing about this coffee bar, guys, this is a modern farmhouse with a twist of country and a little bit of glam. And honestly, it's totally fine if it's not 100% centered. For me, I just really love how this is turning out. So guys, as I was roughing up the edge with a sanding block from the Dollar Tree, I realized I really just did not like how large the word is was on this sign. So I recut it smaller to match the font for sheet. And that's actually the Skinny, which is a free font from defont.com for personal use. I just cut it out and made it smaller and I really feel like it made a huge difference 2020 really is boo sheet, is it not? I mean, I've seen so many cute signs like that, so I wanted to make one for my coffee bar. Now this next one, this is a free printable, guys. So I do have a free printable. It is linked in the description box below. It's, you know, just free for you. You don't have to sign up for anything. I'm not collecting emails. You are very welcome to it, and I hope that you utilize it if you decide to recreate this sign for the coffee bar. Again, I did use my Cricut, so if you are a Cricut person, you can also email me and I will try to share this file with you via the Cricut design space. So what I decided to do was split the word coffee and use one of these cute little ghosts that I painted white with some white chalk paint as the O for the word coffee. And I just added a little bit of hot glue and attached it in between so that it does become the O, and I think it's so adorable. Um, again, because mornings are scary, I hope you're seeing a little theme happening here, guys. I am going for a ghost type of coffee bar theme with a little bit of sarcasm, so I'm hoping that you're finding it punny. Oh, 
Okay guys, so the next DIY I did was this cute little coffee cup. I picked this up at the Dollar Tree. I really like that it's already trimmed in black so it was going to be an easy transition. All I did was take a little bit of painter's tape and taped it straight across. I did not even try to recreate the little swoop at the bottom of the lid. Um, that really wasn't going to be necessary for me. I just took a little bit of black chalk paint that I mixed up with that gray. Again, everything I did paint-wise all sort of matches because I did that trick of extending my paint. So I just painted the top of that um, in that color and then I'm coming back with some white chalk paint and I'm getting really low on this guy's too. So, you know, if anybody knows where I can get some white chalk paint and not have my order canceled, let me know. <laughs> But I, so I went ahead and did this in the white and black, and then I picked up this cute ribbon from Michaels with a 40% off coupon. And then this is a, also a Cricut design, guys. And when I remove the decal cover on here, the transfer paper, I actually lose my apostrophe on the S. And guys, I just haven't even had a chance to grab a Sharpie to put it back on, as you can see but that is how that turned out, and I think it's really, really cute. Okay, everybody, moving on to the largest sign that I have in my coffee bar, and guys, this is a free printable. I did start with some lightweight spackle from the Dollar Tree, and look at how cute that little ghost sign is, but guys, it just wasn't gonna fit in with the decor, so I flipped him over and I painted him white. I did some spray paint first, I also took the word spooky out of this three pack. It started out galvanized, but after some spray paint, it looked that color. And then again, mixed up some of my paint and I made that in the black color. I did take a little bit of this fix all adhesive to apply it to the back of this little galvanized word. And then with some hot glue for a quick hold, I put that down and I did let this sit up so that it would stick to my sign really, really well. Okay guys, so this is also a free printable and a play on words. It says a brew, so good, it's spooky. But when I cut it out, the B did not attach to the R, so I just used my own spacing and was able to attach everything. Sorry for everything being out of focus here, but all I did was apply some hot glue to the back and I flipped it over and then I did use a couple little clamps just to be sure that my ghost with the logo for our new G Host Coffee Company was secured to my sign. So guys, again, a play on words. I'm really loving the whole ghost theme. If I had to do it over again, I would have made sure that Coffee Co. was actually nice and straight, but guys, it just turned out really, really cute. And then I used some Dollar Tree Buffalo Check ribbon to finish off the bottom of this sign and this is how it turned out. But guys, I really hope you're ready for him. This is my trash to treasure ghost gnome and I do gnomes a lot on my channel so this is not new. But for those of you who are new here, I'm gonna go a little bit slower or at least try to give a little more detail. So what I usually start with is some sort of trash to treasure. This is a water bottle that I've filled up with some uh, white beans. I'm going with white just because we are making a ghost. I use these hair rollers in two different sizes and I cut them in half. The larger ones are for the legs and the uh, thinner ones, they are for the arms. And all I do is I take an X-Acto knife after I figure out where I want the legs to be and I cut some slits into the bottom of the bottle. And then I'm going to take that white piece that extends off of the roller. I'm going to shove that down inside of the bottle, add some hot glue to make sure that everything is secure. Now, what I did was I put hot glue in the bottom of that so that I would have something for my um, little exacto knife to stick down into. You want to play with this a little bit just for balance, just to be sure that when you have him in the upright position and his shoes on, that he's actually going to stand for you. Now, what do we use for shoes? I use the inside 
inserts of these baby booties from the Dollar Tree. And again, X-Acto knife, cut some slits in the top, just sort of like that. And once you have those in place, you'll want to manipulate that around the legs themselves. You can go up as tall or up towards the body as, as much as you want or down towards the floor as much as you want. Just do it so that it stands on its own. Then I take some hot glue and I add some pebbles or rocks or anything like that. And then I'm going to take some of this felt and I'm going to cut it longer than I actually need. And I do that so that I can close up the bottom of these little shoes. I just take some hot glue and lay the felt over it. Now some people might think this is a waste of, you know, uh, fabric and really it's not. I mean, I got the whole roll for a dollar and I really want to cover the entire shoe, the bottoms, and also I'm going to wrap this around the actual shoe, just like a present. So take your time with this. To be 100% honest, you're only going to see the tips of these shoes when it's all said and done. So if you're the type of person that really cares about what everything looks like finished product, product as though you're going to sell this to somebody, then take more time with this. I don't sell my gnomes. I do these so that I can put these in, you know, I love them. So I do these so that I can have them as part of my decor and really for nothing more. So once I've done that and I know that he's standing well on his own, I'm going to add the arms just exactly the same way that I did the legs. You know, hot glue, insert the little tip, and then, you know, just double check, make sure everything's good, and then glue it in place. All right, so we've got that midline, and I've got enough of the beans inside of the bottle that I know he's going to stand well on his own. I just close it up with some hot glue. Now, this fabric, I picked that up at the Dollar Tree, guys. I know they this is hard to find. You can use anything for the shoes. You could use just the felt, just like it is, but I wanted him to be a little more modern farmhouse for me, so I brought in the buffalo check, and I covered his feet again with the buffalo check, and now I'm going to cover the arms. Um, again, this is not something that you're actually going to see underneath his little outfit, but for me to finish it off, this is exactly what I did. So I just added some hot glue and I started wrapping at the bottom. So I've got him flipped over. And as you can see, the bottoms of the feet aren't perfect, guys, but it, it ser serves the purpose. So you just add some hot glue and you wrap around the fabric, around the arms, and once you've done that, you're ready to move on to the next step. And so the next step is to bring in some more felt. Now I could not find white felt at the Dollar Tree. If you can, that will be perfect. I picked mine up at Michael's for like 39 cents. I fold it in half. And then I decide, you know, again, where that center is going to be on the felt. So I fold it in half and then I fold it in half again and find my center. Then I'm going to cut a circle out. You don't want to go too large, guys. So start out small and you're just going to take that circle over the body of the gnome in the center and down to the arms. And then once you get that in place, you're going to take some hot glue underneath the arms, but not to the arms, and you're going to glue the felt in place. Now I, you can see I can bend the arms, and I did that to give this next piece, which is one of these car cloths from the Dollar Tree, a little more body, if you will. So I'm doing the same thing. Fold it in half, fold it in half again, and this time I'm cutting a smaller circle so that it doesn't go all the way down to the arms. If you want it to, you totally can. I didn't want that. So I'm going to now take the edge of this car cloth and I'm coming to the edge of the arm and I'm attaching it there. So that gives all of this um, car cloth some extra body at the top of the arms. Now I'm just taking some hot glue and how I start this is I go onto the felt and I come down the seam of the car cloth and I glue it together. And I do that on the front and then I do that on the back. Once I have the front and the back of this car cloth attached to the felt, then I take the felt and I glue it together in the center as you'll see me do here. 
Why do I take these steps? Just to be sure that everything is lined up for me. You can do the felt first and then do the car cloth to the felt if that's how you wanna do it, but that was the steps that I took. So I'm going to do this on the left-hand side and the right-hand side. And once that's done, I'm bringing in some of these chenille stems and I'm gluing them to the other finished edge of this car cloth or the seam. Now, once I have that all attached, I actually take and fold the car cloth up onto the body and then I bring it down so it's nice and straight and then I start to roll it under. And every once in a while, I'll take a little bit of hot glue just to tack everything into place. What these chenille stems do for this car cloth is it not just keep you know not just keeps it like hemmed but it also gives it the ability to be bent into certain shapes so you can give your ghost uh, the look as though he's floating because you're able to manipulate the bottom of that now I'm going to just take some of these beads that I also picked up at Michael's and I'm going to leave them in their unfinished state and I'm just going to attach them to the ends of the arms so he has some hands. So the next thing I need to do is sort of figure out where my nose is going to go and I'm also going to keep it in the natural state. And I figured out that, you know, sort of right there just below the neck of the bottle is where I'm going to put that. And so I just use some hot glue and attach it. Now this faux fur, I also picked up at Michael's and I did decide that I wanted to go ahead and layer it. So the white fur is going to go down to the tips of the toes and then the black fur is going to come around the nose itself. Does the white fur get lost a little bit in the ghost outfit? Yeah, it does, but I know it's there and I think it's really cute. I think if I had to do it over again, I might have done a few different layers of the black and white. But the thing about a, a gnome is, is that you can create this however you want to. So I just started with the black fur around the nose and then I'm going to attach the white fur right underneath of it. Oh, he's looking so cute, guys. So now I'm gonna take one of these chalkboard wood stakes and one of these Jelly Roll in the five point. It's a real fine point white ink that I wanna use. And I just took the stick off the bottom of this and I'm going to use my own handwriting to write in the word boo with the little exclamation point. And this is going to be a cute little sign that he's going to be able to hold. So I just took some hot glue and I made sure that I covered up the hole with the sign. So you don't see the holes in his little bead hands, but this is him holding this sign and it's so cute. But now he needs a hat, right guys? So let's take a Dollar Tree sock and some more of this Buffalo check fabric that I also picked up at the Dollar Tree. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down below the cuff of this sock. So all of the elastic part is going to be left alone. And I'm just going to roll this sock uh, over so that I know where to cut off the fabric. And now I'm just going to start with some hot glue. And like I said, you start below the cuff. So anything that's elastic, you want to leave alone. Um, but you want to attach this fabric to the sock. So we'll just start right there on that corner and I start to fold it over and I really just follow the sock um, shape as I bring this little bit of fabric over and just a little bit of hot glue is going to keep everything in place.
So like I said, guys, I don't make my gnomes for sale. So this is the way that I decided I was going to do this hat. You can find hat patterns online for free. Just do a little bit of Googling. So the reason I left the elastic or the cuff part of the sock alone was because I wanted the white to really stand out from the rest of his hat. And I'm just pulling it over his nose and using some hot glue to keep everything in place. I'm just gonna make some final adjustments. And then I want to finish off the bottom of this little hat. I want it to come to a point so I can add a little pom-pom to the end of it. So all I did was added some hot glue and folded it over on itself a few times. And guys, this is how he turned out. He is so cute. Okay guys, so here's a reminder of my coffee bar and this is what it looks like now. It's the perfect combination of country and modern farmhouse in a ghost theme with a little bit of sarcasm. I absolutely adore how this turned out. I hope that you see that these are some things that you can totally do with some Dollar Tree items and a little bit of imagination. If you don't have a Cricut, guys, you can print out or you can you know, use the transfer method off of a printout sheet or whatever. But I just think this turned out so, so cute. The burlap underneath my coffee maker is something I actually made myself as well. And these are just some more Dollar Tree items that I added a little bit of ribbon to and pulled everything together. Coffee because mornings are scary, guys. And this was the perfect addition to my kitchen this year. I don't normally do a holiday theme on my coffee bar, but I thought it's 2020. Throw all the rules out the window, right? So here's what the back of my little ghost gnome looks like and i just oh my gosh you guys i'm so excited for how he turned out this is the first time i've ever done a layered beard on a gnome and i think it just turned out so so cute coming up to the top guys this was my favorite dollar tree halloween diy ever these boo houses and then here is the new g host coffee company established 2020 a brew so good it's spooky guys i really hope that you liked today's video if you did please give me a thumbs up let me know down in the comments below what was your favorite part of this video today also if you are new here please consider subscribing and everybody while you're here go ahead and watch another video i will see you in my next one until then bye